How long will we continue to see the letters T and A? Ethan Page gets paid. What to do with OVE? And an interview with one half of the Desi Hit Squad, Rohit Raju. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North, right here on the Impact Lounge. You want a star, but you've got the star, the sun. And just like the sun, everything revolves around me. You're listening to Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin. And this is your boy, Hakeem Zane, a.k.a. Rohit Raju. Hey folks, Lewis Carlin here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, as we all know, TNA is back. Uh, Moose showing up with the TNA title. And I was reading that TNA is apparently back for the long haul. Uh, executives at Access TV really uh, really were um, happy with the ratings that T- the TNA special got uh, that they showed on Access TV uh, a few weeks back. Uh, so it looks like TNA is back for the long haul. So I'm thinking, what uh, what can they do? Um, how how can they uh, how can they work this in? A lot of people are saying that oh, we're gonna get a TNA invasion. Uh, we're gonna get a title unification match with uh, Tessa Blanchard. Personally, I don't think any of those would work. Uh, an invasion angle. You know, the invasion, the invasion uh, angle storyline has been, I think, run to the ground by uh, by various promotions, and I don't think we need to get another invasion angle. Uh, I th- we've done that. Um uh, that's been done already in Impact Wrestling. Uh, it's, it's been done in, in every promotion. It's, it's like I said, running to the ground. We don't need an invasion angle. And besides, you, you, as I said in my last pa- podcast, you can't really run an invasion angle unless you have major stars from TNA's past. Uh, Moose, not really a TNA star. Uh, Hernandez, okay, uh, but then again, uh, who else? Who else can you get? You know, as, as I pointed out uh, in my last show, I mean, it's not going to work with with Moose, Hernandez, Chase Stevens, Kid Cash, uh, and uh, and shark boy so an evasion angle won't work so I, I would say let's forget about the evasion angle it's not we don't need the evasion angle so let's um let's stop uh, i know a lot of people are out there are still hoping for oh i hope we get the invasion but uh, no I don't, I don't think the invasion angle would work um title unification people saying that this is going to lead to a title unification match with tessa <coughs> tessa blanchard and i'm thinking why does it need to lead to a title unification match uh do do we need a title unification match is is the tna title a recognized title it's not recognized as of right now uh so it could just be moose you know trying to piss off tna wrestlers here's what here's what here's what i think um they could do here's what i think they can do T- he has the tna belt uh proclaim himself the greatest TNA wrestler of all time and uh, you can have guys uh, from TNA uh, then you could bring in like bring back a Chase Stevens bring in Kid Cash you know bring in Shark Boy uh, bring in some other guys that you could bring in from from TNA's past and have them try to uh, defeat Moose for that TNA title and then and then of course you know then you get Hernandez Hernandez um, would be the top guy that they have uh, from TNA right now so Hernandez eventually could step up to the plate and, and challenge and challenge Moose and then we could have a nice little Moose uh, versus Hernandez Hernandez feud uh, which you know which would wouldn't be a bad thing uh, Hernandez was really impressive in the in the three-way match um, on the last show on Rebellion no, it wasn't Rebellion. I'm sorry. It was the... No, it was Rebellion. Rebellion Night 2. I'm sorry. Rebellion Night 2. So he was he was really impressive. So it all could lead to Hernandez uh, stepping up, saying, all right, here I am. Uh, let's, let's, I, I want a shot at uh, the TNA title. I just hope that it doesn't end up being that um, Hernandez steps up to the plate after a lot of wrestlers after a lot of wrestlers uh, fail and uh, he eventually wins the TNA title and, and restores pride to TNA and then he gets carried around the ring by Chase Stevens, Kid Cash and Shark Boy. But in all honesty I think Moose is going to hold on to this uh, TNA title uh, throughout throughout these tapings and uh, into the next set of tapings and, and the fact of the matter is even if he if he loses, which I don't think he's going to lose uh, it's not a recognized title so he doesn't really have to give up the belt he kind of showed up with it 
what I'm kind of hoping that uh, Impact will do is uh, there's a lot of free agents out there right now, such as Kurt Angle, and EC3, uh, Rockstar Spud. Uh, they could add legitimacy to this TNA resurgence if they uh, if they want to bring these guys in. I, I can see Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle coming back, not as a wrestler, but as a, as a uh, I don't know, as, as an advisor, quote unquote advisor to, to Moose and the TNA title, something like that. Because uh, and if they could bring in, uh, you know, EC3, uh, that'd be fantastic. But uh, there are some guys out there that that could add legitimacy uh, to this uh, TNA resurgence. Uh, and people are also saying, oh, we're going to get a title unification match. And, and I, I was thinking about it, but why do we have to get a title unification match? Uh, do do we need to get a title unification match? Uh, the, the the title's not really recognized, as I said. So we really don't need to have a title unification match. I think it's just more of Moose being a heel and saying that he is better than any TNA wrestler that ever existed. So he deserves a TNA title. I think that's that's the storyline that they that they're gonna go with. I, we don't need a title unification match. Uh, so. Um, Will we see one? I don't know. We could, uh, but I, 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 I think the storyline is is would work really well with just Moose saying that he's better than any TNA wrestler that ever existed, uh, which he's been doing, you know, which which has been doing basically more or less uh, leading up to this uh, the the TNA pay per view that uh, that never that didn't couldn't take place because of the pandemic. Uh, so I think that's that's a cool storyline that they that they could go with. Ethan Page, Ethan Page uh, was talking uh, to, um, uh, he was interviewed by a website, and uh, he says that uh, he, he has been getting paid by Impact for canceled shows, shows that have been canceled by the pandemic. So anybody out there who is saying that Impact Wrestling is not paying their talent, Impact Wrestling has no money, uh, this is... The, this is the final nail in the coffin of that theory that you guys have been running for years. Ethan Page getting paid by Impact Wrestling for shows that were scheduled but were canceled by Impact uh, due to the pandemic. And even Ethan Page, and Ethan Page confirmed that um, <clears throat> they filmed the match, uh, new match for Impact. It took them two hours to film it, and he got paid for the full day. So Impact Wrestling is paying their talent very very nicely and very very fairly for anybody out there who still thinks that you know they they that they could still claim that impact wrestling is not paying their talent and i i still see that that i still see that um that post or that claim from time to time and uh again proof right here that impact wrestling takes care and pays their talent very fairly Okay, I just wanted to get that point across. Uh, Michael Elgin, Sammy Callahan. I don't know if anyone's been been, been following their Twitter, um, it, but it wasn't recently. But, but I think it was after Rebellion. Uh, Michael Elgin and Sammy Callahan got into a little Twitter fight, and I think it might be leading to a feud between uh, Michael Elgin and Sammy Callahan. And I'm all for that. Uh, even though Callahan lost to, to Ken Shamrock, which I feel he should have won. You know, new character. They need to build up the new character. He should have lo- should not have lost in his first match as a new character. But um, Michael Elgin, Sammy Callahan. That's that's a few that you know, has my has my approval, and I think it has the approval of of every single Impact Wrestling fan out there. Uh, so hopefully uh, they're leading towards a feud with uh, Michael Elgin and uh, Sammy Callahan. Now OVE, OVE uh, hasn't won a match in a very very long time that not, not that i can remember uh, not not that i can remember they may be something on explosion that i haven't seen but i can't recall the last time ove has won a match and uh now they've officially have split from sammy callahan uh, sammy callahan going on his own uh so i'm thinking what do you do with ove what do you do with ove and uh here's here's my idea here's my idea eric young's available Eric Young is available. I would say bring Eric Young in and make him the new leader of OVE. But, but, people are saying that, people will argue that, oh, Eric Young is from Canada and not from Ohio. Okay, 
Does it have to be OVE? Maybe it's time to drop the OVE name and start a brand new faction led by Eric Young. So Eric Young, uh, Jake and Dave Christ, and uh, Madman Fulton will form it. And they could bring um, maybe somebody else in. Maybe they could bring it. Maybe Navia um, um, would be uh, another member. But they could bring another member in. Uh, but I think it's a good idea. The only thing is, though... You know, the trolls would be out there saying that they're just a sanity ripoff, you know, which, which, you know, okay, that's, that, that's going to be expected. But still, I think this could be very inter interesting, a very interesting scenario. Uh, if you bring Eric Young in and make him the new leader of OVE, they drop the OVE name uh, and uh, they, they come up with a new name. And uh, they form a new faction. I think, uh, that, I think that would breathe new life into uh, Dave Christ. Uh, Jake Christ and Madman Fulton into that faction and Eric Young I said it would be a great leader so I say go for it I say go for it I think that's a great idea I think that's a great way to bring Eric Young in uh, you could argue saying oh Eric Young come in could feud with Moose over the TNA title no I, I, I would I, I would rather see him form a um he could still feud with Moose, right? He could still feud with Moose. He could come in, form the new faction, and then go after Moose. But uh, I say I, I like the idea of Eric Young coming in, uh, forming a new faction with a new name uh, with uh, with the members of OVE. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll go that route. You, you never know. Uh, but anyway, okay, so I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with one half of the Desi Hit Squad, Rohit Raju, and uh, I want to point out there was there was a website out there that actually um, published a story about Rohit Raju, uh, in which they claimed that Rohit Raju said that Impact Wrestling is holding him back, and that story was not true. And Rohit Raju actually almost immediately in this interview, you know, I was going to ask him about that, uh, but he almost immediately in this interview just went right into that because this was something that uh, he never. Saw said uh, this was something that really bothered him and uh, he kind of set the record straight uh, within the first um, first I believe it was the first five minutes of the interview uh, first five ten minutes at least of the interview he jumped in and set the record straight on that false story that's floating around right now on the internet uh, so that said I give you my interview with one half of the Desi Hit Squad Rohit Raju very excited today because I have a member of the Desi Hit Squad. He's not only a member of the Desi Hit Squad, he's also the AAW Heritage Champion. He is the Midwest Territory Champion for Glory Pro. And in addition, he's one half of the Border City Wrestling Tag Team Champions. I'm talking about Rohit Raju. Welcome to the show, Rohit. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? How are we holding up during this uh, crazy pandemic, man? I'm actually... Um I'm good. I'm good. I'm bored at times. I'm staying busy and creative. I have my little home gym. I work out. I take my dogs outside when it's nice. It's actually been nice out. Uh, so I'll probably go outside, take them walking and um, grill, you know, and just chill. I already got my workout in. And other than that, I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. I haven't uh, been working much. Uh, uh, my job, um, unfortunately, uh, I drive a truck, and a lot of a lot of customers don't want me on site, so it's um, it's it's kind of tough right now. But you know, doing the podcast, I'm catching up on a lot of wrestling, so um, so it's all working out okay for me. Good. That's good. So, so you've been with Impact for for a number of years now um, uh, as a member of the Disney Hit Squad. How how would you rate your time um, with Impact Wrestling? It's been good. You know, it's been a learning process. I started out at the bottom, and I've slowly been working my way up. The, the Daisy Hit Squad has had some obstacles thrown in our way. You know, we've had um, some momentum would build, and then something would happen, and we'd change, like, uh, members, and then we'd change members again or something of that nature. And right now, I'm the only one able to do stuff you know like the nashville taping so it's just myself which is kind of hit and miss i don't get i don't get to evolve with them but i do get to evolve by myself but um you know i've i've always tried and or uh try to be more than the entry level position i feel like impact has been noticing that as of late which is awesome so i can't wait for people to see some of the stuff that they have me doing but well, there is one thing i do want to say speaking of the daisy hit squad i i did a, a reddit ama not too long ago it was like a, i think it was a couple days ago it was friday or thursday i'm sorry 
And I got tagged yeah. yesterday, and it was you know we all typed it was all typed out answers. I got tagged yesterday. I guess the dirt sheets are literally taking some of the stuff I said and trying to make it. They're taking it out of context. That really pissed me off. I was not a fan of that because okay. someone asked me about being stereotyped, and um, which I've always said I, I do believe that there is still stereotypes in wrestling, but I always usually follow up with. Uh, Impact gives us a lot of free reign, you know. And then okay. somebody had said, they had, someone even said, Rohit Raju feels like he's being held back at Impact. And I was like, what? I was like, that is the furthest thing from the truth that I said. I was so upset about that. A fan actually commented in the section, in the comment section, he had said, no, that's not what he said at all. But I was like, damn, man, the first time I get a little love in dirt sheets and it's not really love, it's they're trying to throw. <laughs> They're trying to make some controversy. I was like, that shit will get me in trouble, man. I'm not trying to – like the last yeah. thing I want to do is lose out on anything on Impact. Like I always say – like I said, like, yeah, we. I don't want to be – I want to be more – I want to have a better position in the company that I do now. You know, and I do think that the ball has dropped a couple times with us, but I think that we've done a pretty good job. So, yeah, I saw that, and I was just really pissed off. I was like, that's not even – what I was saying or how I said it, and it's in the, the chat on Reddit. I was so pissed about that. Sorry to go off topic. Okay, yeah, that's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny you bring that up because that was going to be my next question. I was going to ask you. Uh, I, I I saw that. I saw that on on Google today, and, and where it says um, that you feel that impact was holding you back. And I was going to ask you if it's true and oh. uh, how you feel about that. But no, I'm glad you glad you answered it before I get to answer the question. Answer the question. Yeah, uh, dude, that made me so mad. I was like, I was like, I didn't. I never even said that in the thing. And one of the questions was. I actually read the question wrong. The question was, were there any moves that you guys wanted to do that didn't happen? And I thought it was – he goes, is there any stories of moves? I thought it was, are there any stories of things you wanted to do uh, that got shot down? And that was my answer about us being more serious. And uh, they liked the dynamic of Gamma and I always being at odds because they thought that was more entertaining, me being kind of sillier. But things are like going in a different direction with me. Man, I was so pissed when I saw that. I was like, that that could hurt. Like if anything, any type of push or any type of direction that the company wanted to go with me, that'll hurt it. Like screw these guys for saying that shit. I was so yeah, pissed. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, I can imagine. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you brought that up uh, immediately because I, I thought that it sounded a little confusing because I know uh, if you're following the storyline right now, it seems like you're 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 about to break from the Desi Hit Squad and and uh, possibly go on your own. But that, that's that's the feeling I'm getting. Uh, Gamma Singh slapped you. You looked upset. Uh, am I am I correct? Are you are you um, eventually gonna head out on your own and split from the Desi Hit Squad? I'm just gonna say you'll have to tune in and find out. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. But do Fair me a enough. favor. If you do hype up this podcast, make sure you take this, this part, how I'm upset with the dirt sheets for trying to take my words out of context. Make Absolutely, sure you hype, man. you hype that because that, man, that really pissed me off. Like, I'm just waiting to get a text from Scott and be like, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? Yelling at me. <laughs> like, dude, I did not say that. They got, they literally turned that shit around. Man, I was, I was so uh, mad okay, when I read cool. that. Oof. No, I can yeah. imagine. So I'll definitely, um, I'll definitely hype this, uh, this part, this part, man. Yeah. Um, I, I, you, you mentioned that um, uh, earlier that there, there have been different versions of Desi Hit Squad. Just curious, is there? I, I really enjoyed you and uh, Gurinder Singh, uh, who was eventually replaced by Raj Singh. Is there a story as to why uh, Gurinder was uh, replaced with Raj? I think there was something going on with his visa, and I, I think. Uh, I mean, you really have to ask Gersinder on that. Like he told okay. me, he was he was okay. upset. They need to do something with his visa, and it was just taking time. And I just don't think he was he didn't want to wait anymore. And you know, so it was just a mutual thing, I guess. But I loved teaming with him. I think he's he's great. He's young. He's trained by Lance Storm. Wish him the best of luck. You know, I talked to him here and there. He's over in the UK right now, and. Um, I think the difference between, I guess, all three of them is Gersinder was the younger of, you know, he was still green. Not green, but he was only three years in. So our, our, our ideas would gel a little bit better than Raj and I at first. Because Raj was, had been wrestling longer than I have, I believe. And he came, he wanted to come in with his ideas. And we kind of butt heads at first. 
but not like butt heads like in a, a hard way just like you know we both just didn't we disagreed with the vision of where we were going but then we started to get on the same page and then they had brought Shira in and then I got kind of put it would be like sometimes they would have Shira and I they wanted Shira to get more work you know and get him more exposure so they would have him come in and doing the smaller um shows and they would have me come team up with them and stuff like that so everybody offered something different i can't tell you who my favorite is just because i enjoy teaming with all three of them uh you know what i want to team i want to team up with gamma that's what i want to happen yeah i was gonna ask what what is it like working with uh with a legendary gamma sing i love gamma man gamma's the best He's so he's he's so old school. He's he's such a great worker. Uh, I always tell this story anytime anyone asks me that. And P, he's very underrated. People don't realize how great Gama is. Uh, we were in Mexico and they told him to cut this promo. And they're like, "Hey, do you speak any Spanish?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, a little bit." He goes out there, cuts this whole promo in Spanish. Has him eating out of his hand at first. The next thing you know, I don't even know what he said. The next thing you know, they're booing, booing the hell out of him. And like he does it everywhere we go because he cuts these promos offline. You guys don't see him. And, uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. Gamma's the best. I love listening to his stories about the old days, man. That's like I love – I'm a huge fan of wrestling, especially the history of it. So to listen to him tell the old stories about some of the old legends is really great. So you said you were, you were, you were want to you want team with Gamma Singh then. Is yeah. That, is that what he said? You ever watch uh, – do you remember when Bobby Heenan would team up with Haku? Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to do something like that with Gamma where <laughs> – I'm I'm constantly having to be the workhorse, and every time I get the I get the upper hand, Gama wants to tag, and he comes in, get a couple shots. All of a sudden, they start to fire up, <laughs> tags me back in. I come in, I get shut down, <laughs> and then it's like this constant dynamic, like where I'm like so mad at him, and then at the end, something happens, and he gets the pinfall, and then he takes all the credit for the win. Um, yeah, I, but as of right now, it can't happen because you know we can't they can't travel, so. All right, well, then, well you, you guys will be back soon enough, I, I think. I think this the uh, this coronavirus thing is done, um, hopefully, in, in a few months, man. Man, I hope you're right. Yeah, I hope I, I hope so, too, man. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying – actually, I was going to ask, what's it? I know you were on the um, the Rebellion show against uh, uh, Suicide Chris Bay and uh, Trey Miguel. What was it like wrestling in front of uh, no crowd? At first, it was weird, and that airs tomorrow. That airs tomorrow yeah, on Access. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it was weird uh, because you don't have that adrenaline. So you're going out there and like the first bump, the first big hit you take, you're just like, oh, my God. But after a while, you start cooking and you're good to go. You, you forget. And then instead of, you know, playing to the crowd, you're sitting there playing to the camera. You find the camera. You actually get to be more of an entertainer in that aspect so it's it's different i think tomorrow i i really can't wait for people to watch our match i mean people are going to hate on it regardless you know just how some people are but i think the majority of people will really appreciate what we tried to do in this match and the hard work we put into it because we did try to cater to the tv audience a lot and put on a good match at the same time so i hope people pick that pick up on that but and they enjoy it i hope they enjoy i I saw a lot of great positive feedback for week one i hope we get the same for week two yeah well uh, unfortunately this podcast will be out after that that airs uh but i'm really looking forward to that match uh and i really hope um that they do uh break you away from the desi hit squad uh, so to speak and you can go out on a on a singles um singles run in uh impact because you're you're tremendous on the indie scene and we're gonna get we're gonna get into that shortly uh but if you if you do go singles and i know you said you know watch and find out and i'll, I'll be watching to find out what would be the the immediate goal the exhibition title the the heavyweight title what would be your immediate goal for uh for as a first singles wrestler with impact just some wins <laughs> Okay. Just some wins, man. <laughs> I've been at the bottom for so long, and and I and I do know my worth. At the, and this, I hope this doesn't sound too egotistical, but I know I can be a star. I think kind of what I said this on the uh, AMA on Reddit the other day. Um, I think my indie work has proven that I can carry a singles run, you know what I mean? And even a tag run, but I I can be a star. I can be someone that the company can mold around. And I'm hoping with the stuff that they've recently been giving me that they see that as well, because there's not a lot of guys that can cut a, 
a really good promo. There's guys that cut passable promos, and then there's guys that cut promos that you don't forget, and you're like, okay, this guy is on. There's something with this guy, and I believe I cut that promo. So I do feel like my worth is more than just being a job guy, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And that's not my, – my time ha- there has been way better than it used to be. It's just a very slow process, and I'm just getting so antsy. I just want to break out so bad, and I feel like this is my opportunity. They've given me something, and I think I've really been taking advantage of it. But um, I honestly, one guy, there's two guys that I really want to work with. When he gets back, I really want to work with Rich Swan. I think Rich Swan is okay. so great. And then I want myself and Cousin Jake, a.k.a. Jake something, to have a singles match on Impact. Give us 10 minutes. Let us do what we do. Anytime we've wrestled, and we've wrestled a million times, it's really, really good. It's fire. And I'm, yeah. I'm hoping we get that chance on Impact sooner or later. Absolutely. I was going to say later on, uh, and I I, uh, I know I've seen matches with you and Jake something, and they're, they're just absolutely phenomenal. I was going to say, I, I hope that uh, Don Callis, Scott DeMore, decide, you know what, let's put uh, Cousin Jake and uh, Rohit Raju in the ring. Oh, I'm sorry, let's put Jake something and uh, Hakeem Zayn in the ring and let them just <laughs> go, let them go at it, uh, let them go all out and see what they can do. You guys would just absolutely tear the house down, man. I, I appreciate that, man. And I honestly, I 100% believe that. There's just something with him and I that clicks. We're best friends outside of the ring. We're better enemies inside of the ring. And it's just that Goku Vegeta. I always say that. It's just that rivalry. And I want to introduce that on a national level. I want everyone to see that. And it's, there's something special there. There really is. Uh, I spoke to you in January 2018, as before uh, you, you started with the Desi Hit Squad. You said uh, Jake Something was your uh, all-time favorite opponent. Uh, March 2020, is that still the case? Always, man. That's that's my okay. dude. I actually okay, love. There you go. Yeah, but I, I, I do. As of late, I love working with the Rascals. I think there's a lot of chemistry okay. there, whether it's tag team or singles. Uh, especially Trey and myself. I think there's just a really good dynamic there between us. I want Dez one-on-one. I had that match with Zach, which I really loved. It got a lot of great feedback. Um, and I want now, I just now I just need Dez one-on-one. I like working with Cody Diener because Cody is like, you know, that old school. I love doing that. Somebody that I really enjoy working with just because there's two guys, they're so good. And they elevate me, and I learn a lot from being in the ring with them. TJP and Eddie Edwards. Eddie okay. Edwards, the way he switches gears, the way he knows how to just – the guy is – he's so underrated. He's so good. Um, another guy I really want to one-on-one with is Jake Christ. I think he's amazing as well. Very underrated, unappreciated talent. And then Sammy. I've never, ever, ever got a chance to be in the ring with Sammy. Oh, wow. And I would love to verbal spar with him, and I would love to just get in the ring with him. Because guys like that, they're that next level. That That's the level I want to get to. And, yeah. you know, you think you're good, and then you get in the ring with those guys. You're like, okay, this is where I need to be. And uh, being in the ring with them, I think, Eddie, every time after I get in the ring with them, it's a war. I get, you know, beat up really, really good, but it's in a good way. And I learn so much from him because he's – I, I think he's the MVP of Impact. He's amazing, and I don't think he's he's one of those guys that does not get the credit he deserves. I, you mentioned Cody Diener. I have a little funny story. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I meant to mention a little earlier, uh, but uh, you were on the Fantastic Father Show here in Windsor uh, with um, I believe it was Raj Singh, the Desi Hit Squad, and um, I'm not sure if you remember that show. Yes. Uh, yeah, it I was. was act- um, it was Bupinder. Pupinder, okay, Pupinder, yep. sorry, but uh, I um I was wearing my I was there I was wearing my Desi Hit Squad shirt when you guys were coming down. Yeah. I desperately tried to get your attention, but you just walked right past me. I'm and, so sorry. I, walked, I want <laughs> I wanted to show you that I was wearing the Desi Hit Squad shirt, but you walked right past me and I went in the ring. And then a, about ten minutes later, I'm walking past Cody Diener and he stops me. He's like, "Are you wearing a Desi Hit Squad shirt?" And I was like, "Oh." I, I am. I'm sorry. I thought he was going to DDT me there for a second. Don't I you ever to apologize you guys to help. I would have helped you. I would have dropped him. I would have, dro- I would have knocked that beard off him. <laughs> no, no, Cody's great, man. Cody's awesome. No, Cody's good. Actually, I had him on a few days ago. He's a, he's a really, really good guy. Um. What are your thoughts on um, the recent gut check winner, Jackson Stone? I know you cut a little promo on him, uh, but uh, would you like to be the one to welcome him, you know, quote unquote, welcome him to to Impact Wrestling as as his first opponent? 
Did that promo air? I didn't even see that. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I did. I saw it. It was, uh, I can't remember. It was like a week or two ago. Uh, no, actually, before they um, announced the Before winner. Rebellion. A week or two before Rebellion, they, they, they aired it, yeah. I like both him and Turbo a lot. I think they both have what the other one doesn't. I think Turva had the entertainment aspect of it kind of a little bit better than Shogun. Shogun has a really good look and a really he he knows his gimmick, but I think Turva outweighed him there. But I think in the ring, Shogun was a little bit more modern day, so to speak. Okay. And um, so it was a toss up to be honest. I like Shogun. I've known him for a few years now. He's a Michigan guy. I would love to get in the ring and stomp a mud hole in him and welcome to welcome him to Impact. <laughs> to be honest, um, I would. So there, I mean, there's a lot that he's gonna have to. There's a lot. There's a lot. He's lucky that he knows a few guys there. When I won the the gut check man, I didn't know anybody there. I felt like a fish out of water. I felt like an outcast. I was. I was like, man, because I was there in 2017 as Hakeem Zayn when I teamed with Idris Abraham, and I met oh, yeah. Fala for the first time, and Bravo was there, of course, I've known Bravo for years, and I knew those guys, but it's different, you know, it's really different, and I knew Fala still, but we weren't close, and um, it was crazy, but luckily for Shogun that he's going to be, you know, he knows a few guys there, but it's hard, it's hard because... It's a whole different level, and I, I had to go through it, and it's a learning process. I think he works very hard, so I, I think he'll swim. He won't sink, and uh, he'll listen to the advice, and he's been busting his ass. I love to see guys that bust their ass get it. There's so many out there that don't get what they deserve, but I, I like to see good yeah. people you know, make it, so congratulations to him. Yeah, and, and you mentioned uh, Tyler Tover. I would love to see him in, in Impact as well. Uh, I love very, very Turbo. talented wrestlers. Yeah. Dude, so talented. Million-dollar yeah. looks. He's awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, all right, let's let's go to the indie scene because uh, you are absolutely tearing it up on the indie scene. You know the AAW Heritage Champion, as I mentioned, the Midwest Territory Champion for Glory Pro, just outstanding. Uh, and just first question on the indie scene, you use Hakeem Zayn. Is there a reason why you're not using uh, Rohit Raju? I would re- use Rohit Raju, but people, some promotions don't want me to they ask hey we don't we'd rather you not do like the indian gimmick uh can you can you just be hakeem zane what i'd like to start doing is doing rohit raju but just as you know not have to come i won't come out like in the indian stuff it'll just be me in the black vest you know what i mean but um no they just wanted me to do something different they wanted me they didn't didn't want that so and i of course what i'm gonna tell the booker no i want i want the booking i could but i (laughs) you know what i mean but it also gives me i look at it like impact allows me it challenges me because i have to figure out who rohit raju is what's he about he's still a little bit of hakeem zane but then again he's he's not so hakeem zane really is just me turned up you know it's it i took and for aw I was wrestling there. Danny liked me. He's like, you're not relating to the crowd. You know, I was having good matches with guys. And he's like, but for whatever reason, they just don't care. And I was like, well, give me a microphone. And then nothing yep. really happened. Um, and then we were sitting on it, and I talked to Trent. And I kind of – I talked to Trent and Rob, and I kind of pitched these ideas that I had. They're like, shit, man, we like that. Why don't we do something with that? And then they came up with the idea, well, why don't we put a mask on you and cut these mystery promos? And I was like, cool. And then the mask got everyone's attention right away. And then the promos were really good. I mean, I don't have to tell you. Everybody else thought it was Austin Aries, Killer Cross. They named all these top indie guys. And uh, the rest is history. It was me. And that's what I needed. And I I took all that bitterness, all of that hatred, all of that frustration, and I put it into Hakeem Zayn. And I kind of did the same thing at Glory Pro. And then I've been wanting Karam. Karam and I did something years ago. Uh, at a friend's show and I dubbed us the hustle and the muscle and it just stuck and then I was like hey why don't I get Karam as my heavy and um, at first Danny put him with MJF I wasn't there they put him with MJF and then MJF got signed and uh, then when I came when I did my thing they're like okay we'll put Karam with you I thought that was very funny and then we just kind of been tearing it up man and Karam instantly he's a giant dude He's Jack. He's really good. He's young. He listens. 
and sky's the limit for him. So people instantly taking have a taking to him. So it's either I'm getting the bookings or he's getting the bookings. And it, but we're we're together. I really want to get him into impact. You know, I think he would well, do man, well. You're, you're- you 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 yeah like uh, I, I want I absolutely love the team of you and Karam. Uh, I was um I was gonna mention that you know is there a chance that you guys could uh, I would love for you like to break away from the hit squad bring Karam to to Impact Wrestling. I mean you guys are absolutely phenomenal together. Uh, such such a such a great team I and mean, sky is the limit for you two man. I really appreciate that. What it's gonna take is people, you know, like you the fans. It's going to take them putting it in Impact's ear. And he showed up in Atlanta. He, man, he, I felt so bad for him. He had such a hell of a time there. It was like car tire popped, and he, he was stuck there for a while. But uh, he showed up to Atlanta, and a couple – D'Lo saw him. was like, who the hell is this? I said, this is – I introduced him to D'Lo. I said, this is my partner outside of Impact. We've been tearing it up, yada, yada, yada. And uh, he didn't get anything. And Scott knows who he is because Carm used to go up to Border City and train. Um, but I would love to get them in there. It's, it's all going to take fans really pushing that and us continuing once, you know, wrestling gets back on us continuing to get that heat, you know, and that's something I love to do. The Indies, you're asking what's the difference. And I'm, I'm hoping with these promos, the ship on the shoulder that, uh, Impact, just I can't, I really can't wait for people to tune into Impact. Some some stuff is changing with me. I'm just gonna say that, but uh, okay. it's not like anything huge, but it's a small step in the right direction. But um, these promos, man, it's like I feel like society, and especially wrestling in general, everyone's so offended and scared to say whatever, and there you can say shit without being too, you know, over stepping over the line. Being just being a piece of shit, pretty much being a heel, being a bad guy, yeah. and uh, yeah. I feel like there's this softness in the world. So I I just kind of want to break that and shit all over that and just and attack that. And I feel like that's what we're doing. And either people are trying to ignore it, they don't care, or people are picking up on it and they're like, there's something here with these guys. And and that's something. Um, it's gonna take time. You know, it's like with anything, you either ignite it right away or people aren't going to jump on your bandwagon until a lot of people tell them to jump on your bandwagon. And um, that's that's kind of what we're hoping we can not the bandwagon jumping, but we just want to be we want to break down some doors and get noticed. And then maybe that'll spark it to where impact will want to bring them on. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you you two together in Impact Wrestling would be unstoppable, man. I would absolutely. That's that's one thing I want to talk about. Um, I was going to talk about that a little later on. I'm glad you brought it up, though. Um, would absolutely. I, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but I'm more a Hakeem Zayn fan than I am a Rohit Roju fan. I, I hope that's okay with you. No, that's fine, and that's okay. in all honesty, I'm, that's Hakeem Zayn is me. You know, yeah. and I love representing India. I love representing the culture. But guys I look up to, you know, I'm a, I like to dress nice and stuff like that, but I'm a hothead and in the ring, you know what I mean? So, and I'm more disgusted. I like to be jokey and funny. Like I like to be the Rohit character. But I'm okay. me being serious is I get I guess it's more realistic when I take all my my anger and my frustrations of the world and I put it into Hakeem Zayn. That is that's me. You know what I mean? That's me griping. That's me complaining. That's me being angry. And I just take all that and I put it into him. And that's more real. So I think it comes across more passionate and more genuine than than Rohit does, in a sense, because that's what I've been doing for years, whereas Rohit I've been doing for a few years. And I'm still trying to find out who Rohit is. And I'm trying to take that Hakeem Zayn and kind of add him in to Rohit yep. more. And I'll never mm-hmm. forget this. Uh, Johnny Bravo and Dave Chris both said to me, they, show, they saw me at shows outside of impact and they're like how come you don't do that in impact and i'm like what do you mean they said well you're you're carefree you're comfortable you're having fun as hakeem zayn but you're not as rohit you're very stiff and very um uh, what's the word i'm looking for not laid back but not condensed 
I can't think of it at the moment, but I'm like so like I'm I'm, I'm in a shell kind of. And I took that to heart, okay. and then I started to be more because I was trying to figure out like how should the Indian character be, and then I just started kind of being more me, swaggering to the ring, talking shit as I walked down the ramp, being more of the black sheep of the Daisy Hit Squad than anything, and that started to break out more, and people started to see that. But now I want to bring that anger and that chip on the shoulder to impact, and I think hopefully that's where I might be going with it. I will see how they how okay. you know the, the creative response to it because i know the, okay. the the you know the silliness is entertaining but sometimes man i i want to dig that knife in and i want to piss people off and i want to be that villain that bad guy that heel that speaks the truth that you can't deny but it's in such a asshole whiny way that you don't like it yeah. you know what i mean so yeah that's what I'm looking. I'm going for. But I, I appreciate that, man. And I understand a lot of people like Hakeem more than they like Rohit. Yeah, I mean, like, like for example, a few a few matches that I've uh, that I've seen recently, tremendous matches. Uh, you against Myron Reed, uh, Cody Lane, PB Smooth, AC Romero, and that no holds barred match against Paco was absolutely fantastic. Uh, what what would you say was your would be your favorite match uh, over the past year? That was it, the one with Paco. Okay. okay. I, I mean, I love that match. I love that match because it was, to me, it was professional wrestling. I it was it was built so well. I came in, I just crapped on two of the top baby faces with Karam, and I and I spit like I, I just spit this hatred towards wrestling fans, AEW, and then we beat them down. And Paco, such this great baby face, you know what I mean? They love him, and then I stole the belt from him. And then we had this heated rematch, and it was all there. The crowd was there. The story was there. The drama was there. The passion was there. The intensity. And to me, and I've never even seen the match, but just the way it felt. And then we took it from them. We took them. We, we took that happy moment from them as, you know, we did what we had to do, and I beat Paco. And then we cut the promo afterwards, and it was just, oh yeah. to me, it was just great. It was one of my favorite matches. Another one was recently in Bay City against Jake Something. This guy who wasn't even a big okay. wrestling fan wrote up about uh, Jake and I, and he was like, these guys are stars. You could tell this was the best match on the card. These guys look like wrestlers, and they put on a great professional wrestling match. Stuff like that means a lot to me. And there's a match actually so that's the- with Trey that's coming up that I really can't wait for people to see. Is that is that on Impact or is it uh, was that on the Indies? Impact. I mean, well, the whole thing tomorrow. Okay. That, that is, I can't wait people to see okay. that with Trey and Chris All right, Bay. Cool. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, man. Yeah. Uh, so back to the match against Paco, uh, no holds barred. You didn't hold anything back at all in that match. That cannonball to the chair that was on Paco, that was nuts. The the stomp into Paco who was on the chair and and you hit him so hard you bent that chair right out of right out of shape, man. You know, how long does the rush last after having such a tremendous match like that, man? Uh it actually kept me up the whole ride home. Usually okay. I get really tired, but I was on such an adrenaline high. It was I was on an adrenaline when okay I'll, I'll, I'm sorry to veer off, but this is how it feels. When I cut that promo after I revealed who I was on the mask, I yeah. was I can't even explain to you. I didn't even I cut. It was like I wasn't even out there. It was like it was a dream. Um, because it felt so good. I was so nervous because I knew the crowd wasn't going to be happy with the reveal because they wanted something so big. And then it was just me who people didn't care about. And then I remember someone sent me a message. Said They said, I was not happy that you were the person behind the mask until you cut your promo. And he said, you cut it with such passion and such hatred that I felt every word you said. And I did. It was real. That was real, man. That's how I felt. That's how I feel about shit sometimes. And I get so you know frustrated, and I can put it into that character. And I was literally shaking when I got to the back. And, and that match with Paco was kind of like that. I felt like it was so good. And I can tell you this. When Paco hit me with that candlestick for the first time, though, oh, my God, that hurt so bad. Because <laughs> I haven't done anything like that in forever. 
man, and he was whooping me with that. And he knew, he said, I remember we were backstage, and he's like, he goes, I did not want you to hit me with that candlestick, but I hit you with it so many times, I knew I had to get it back. And he took everything like a champ, man. Paco, so, he's so tough. And yeah. I love working with him, him and Myron. I absolutely love it. I it just I knew I've been wanting to work with those guys forever, and I knew once we would touch, it would be really, really good. The chemistry would be there. And um, a match like that, man, it, it took a time. It took a while. Sometimes if I have a match like that, and I get home, and it's like one o'clock in the morning, I won't go to sleep till five because I'll be playing the match in the back yeah. of my head over and over again. And I'm just so excited that I created, helped create something so good, and it's it's a great feeling. So he was okay after he went through the chair, right? Because that chair was just bent out of shape after after you put yeah. him right through it. I mean, we're all beat up afterwards. I had, okay. I'm sure he okay. did, you know, bumps and bruises and and sore, and you, you can you can barely walk, and then you got that long drive home, and you're just like shit. You just get up, man. You dust it off, you stretch <laughs> out, and you rest a little bit, and then you go do it again the next weekend. And that's just how it is. You do it until the wheels fall off. So I'm sure he was just as beat up as I was. And that's that's one thing people don't understand. Yeah, we're walking and talking afterwards, but a lot of that shit hurts, man. And look at these guys that do all those death matches. They're and they've raised the stakes. Like holy shit, these guys, you know, they're putting their bodies through crazy stuff. It's, it's insane. Yes, that shit hurts. <laughs> Another guy I want to talk about, Myron Reed. Uh, it seems like every time you get together with Myron Reed, uh, it's it's just complete fire. Uh, like this morning, I was watching the Steel Cage match, which which was really good. Uh, your thoughts on your matches with Myron Reed? Uh, I really enjoyed my matches. I really enjoyed the AEW one. The Cage match was really fun. That was the first time we ever wrestled. And then it was cool because it set up, we got a feeling out process of how we kind of do things together. And... Uh, the AW match I thought was really good, and then I was I was bummed because we were supposed to have the tag match against him and AR Fox, and who knows if that'll be on once you know if that's what we're still going to be doing afterwards. But yeah, it's uh excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, um, Myron's okay. great. Okay. Myron's so talented, and I love his stuff in MLW. I really like the dude, and uh, I enjoy working with him. And people don't. I, I'm pretty sure he's, he's a rascal as well. I'm pretty sure he's part of that clique. So yeah, uh, yeah. I would love to see him in Impact. I don't know why he's not there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe because MLW, he's got the contract there. I, yeah, I think I think I was reading he signed a long-term deal with MLW. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's another great talent I would love to see in Impact Wrestling. Man. Yeah, so good for Myron, though. Do you, do you have a favorite indie promotion that you work for? I know you work at, uh, we mentioned AAW, Glory Pro. Uh, do you have a favorite indie promotion uh, that you like to work for? Oh, man, that's tough. AAW is probably my number one right now, only because it's such a prestigious place. If you look at the talent that's gone through there, it's a who's who. And it was so hard to get in there. And then when I got in there, it was hard to get up the ladder. And as soon as, you know, Danny saw the promos, he was like, okay, cool. And then he just kind of let me off the leash and it, the accomplishment of being a champion there already, to me, is a big deal. Because as I was growing up as a wrestler, um, you know, in my, early in my career, that was always one of the top places to go. I really love Glory Pro. There's something special there. The talent there is amazing. Alpha One, Ethan Page's place is pretty sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's so many great places, man. I just... But AEW might be my number one at the moment. It's it's just a really okay. really fun place to work. But that's not taking away from any of the other promotions I work at because they're all great. They all offer something. Of course, of course. So is is you you we talked about promos for a bit. Is there a secret to cutting a good promo? Do you do you, do you is there a thought process? Are you are you sitting up at night uh, writing down promos or are they just you just speaking what comes to your head? I speak what comes to my head. I've been cutting promos. <clears throat> ever since I was a kid because I would always record myself uh, impersonating I would wrestle with this teddy bear when I was younger and I would commentate while I wrestled and afterwards I would cut a promo as Hulk Hogan or Macho Man or whoever and then we would go to wrestling shows and we would go behind the building afterwards to watch the wrestlers come out and I would cut promos as like Steve Austin or Scott Hall or The Rock Dusty Rhodes and so I've always been talking and then I used to freestyle when I was in high school. 
So that's kind of how I look at promos now. You have certain bullet points that you want to hit, and then everything else just comes off the top of the head. And when it comes off the top of the head, it's more genuine and passionate because you're in the moment. And then uh, that's it, really. I literally walk around my house every single day cutting a promo. It's uh, I, I talk about anything. I talk about this burnt piece of toast to wrestling John Cena. It's just, <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean. It's just, I, I just want to try to cut a promo, and I, I literally just walk around the house, man. If you'd see me in my house, I'll be walking in the bathroom, and I'll just out of the blue, I'll just start cutting a promo. Okay. And man. then I, I and I have, well, if, if, I have things in my head, and when I, when I start to, when they say, okay, man, green light, go, and I'll pull stuff out of the ether, you know, and start saying it in my promo. Well, if you feel like kind of promo, if something comes to your head right now and you want to cut a promo on me or anything, just just stop me and feel free to, to, to cut a promo, man. Okay, well, we'll uh, I'll have that it's in the back of my head now. We'll, we'll cut one before we get off. Okay. Hey, you mentioned John Cena. Is that is that the dream match for you against John Cena? Dream match for me would be, I mean, the Macho Man. That's my all time favorite. Oh wow. Right there. Okay. But yeah, I'd say I'd say Cena, Rock, Austin. I always say. Okay. I had this conversation with another guy recently. Actually, it was a few days ago. We said there's Michael Jordan and then there's basketball. Michael Jordan's one of those guys that transcends basketball. Steve Austin, in my opinion, is the last guy to transcend professional wrestling. Like everybody knows who John Cena is. And I don't feel like there's anybody like that anymore. But I also think that way because regardless, you know, whether you like John Cena or you didn't, you were you didn't skip his promos you didn't skip his matches because you either wanted to see him win or you wanted to see him lose or you wanted to see him mess up or see how he got booed by the crowd you were always invested in what he did that to me is a great wrestler because you have as he has your attention regardless of whether you liked him or not and he was the perfect package he could cut the promo he looked like a professional wrestler and his matches always told a great story uh, I don't feel like those are there's guys like that anymore. I don't know why. That could, that's just my opinion, and uh, I don't know if it's because wrestling's changing and it's it's more based off athleticism and gimmicks than it is a combination of the two. But I, I don't know. I just that's just my opinion. I don't think anyone has that big main event feel. I think Omega was the closest we got. CM Punk probably. But I still don't think they're on that level because I think 30 years from now, we're still going to be talking about, and I say this every single time, you're still going to be talking about Austin Rock, Hogan Flair, Dusty Savage. You know what I mean? You're still going to be talking about those guys. I just don't think there's that guy right now in professional wrestling. I think Cena was the last. Do, do you think that's why WWE keeps bringing back Undertaker and Goldberg and uh, some of the older um, older guys uh, uh, to uh, to big shows? Yeah, I do because it, there's there's still uh, there's still something there. Whether the guys people say, oh, they can't go in the ring, they can't do this, yada yada yada, doesn't matter. Like anytime to me, anytime Steve Austin's on TV, there's that feeling. There's a feeling. You know what I mean? That you get when you see Steve Austin. And yeah. maybe it's because you don't see him a lot. But to me, when I was a kid tuning in every single Monday night when Steve Austin was on TV, it was huge. You know, and it was every Monday night. And sure, there was a, a time when he kind of got stale and he had to reinvent himself. That's what great wrestlers do. Hogan, you know, when he became Hollywood Hulk Hogan, he reinvented his career and added another 10 years yeah. to it. So it's it, it, same thing with The Rock. When Ho Rock was Hollywood Rock, it was phenomenal and I, I just yeah i do think that no granted i don't think it should be at the sacrifice of the guys you have now you have to build stars but i don't know how they operate i don't know how i don't really watch the product as much you know what i mean i'm not a i don't watch it a lot i pay attention to more of what we're doing i do pay attention to what everybody else is doing but i you know kind of pay attention to what my peers are doing on impact more than anything okay but uh and so i can't tell them how to run their business because I don't know how they run their business and I would never do that. But in my okay. eyes, yes, you bring back... It's like Star Wars. I mean, I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan or not, but I'm a huge Star oh, absolutely. Wars fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Big see, I don't know where you stand, but you have this new trilogy and it's not that well received by everybody. And the reason it's not is because you take these characters, Han, Luke, and Leia, Chewie, all those guys... And you kind of put them in bit roles. You don't really give them the respect 
that they deserve. Because no matter what Star Wars is, it's always going to be them. They're always going to be the heart and soul. Those are always going to be the people that brought you to the dance. So you bring them into this new trilogy, and you kind of give us these new characters, and we're supposed to like these new characters, and you kind of force us to act like these new characters are better than the old ones, but you don't really pass the torch. You throw the torch. Like you bring Luke Skywalker in this movie and you strip him of what makes him Luke Skywalker. And whereas some people are like, yeah, I really dug that. You have the majority of people who are your sole fan base are like, that was stupid. And I'm like, that's how I was. I was like, that was horrible. So I get why people liked it. But then you have to realize you have people that are invested in Star Wars because of Han, Luke, Leia, the original trilogy. You know what I'm saying? And so if you literally take these characters and you kind of do jack shit with them, it's it's almost better off to not even have them in your trilogy <laughs> because they overshadow these subpar characters. And nothing against the actors that play these new characters, but they don't... They fail in comparison. They fail in comparison to the old characters because there's there was such a great story told there. There was not a great story told in this new trilogy. It was all over the place. I'm not saying you can't like the movies, but you can't tell me they were great movies because that story was just... A, it was a mess. And I like certain aspects of that new trilogy, but like it was, you just dropped the ball in my eyes. So it's like bringing Steve Austin on TV and comparing him to like one of the new guys. When the new guys, they don't compare to Steve Austin because they don't resonate like that. And you either haven't built them up that way, you haven't let them off the leash that way. There's something about that, you know what I mean? So that's kind of yeah. how I compare it. You, you can't sit here and say, hey, this guy's better. Then this person that's done way more and has built a better name, but this guy's better because we say they're better. No, there's no context to why they're better. There's no heart and soul to behind why they're better. And that's kind of what they did with Star Wars. Ray had no hero's journey. She was good for the sake of being good. You know what I mean? I love Daisy Ridley. I thought she was awesome as that character, but the way they wrote the character Ray. There's nothing there. There's no context. There's no heart and soul behind it. And uh, there's no hero's journey. There's no reason for me to root for her. It's like having Rocky be badass right off the bat. You know what I mean? There's nothing to root for Rocky for. He's not an underdog anymore. And all of a sudden, we're supposed to take these new characters. are supposed to be better than Han, Luke, and Leia and Chewie and all them. But they're not because there's nothing built up to make them be better than them. You're just telling us they're better than them, and we're supposed to accept that. It's the same thing with wrestling, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody will ever be better than Han, Luke, and Leia. Those nobody are, will. Those are, nobody will. I agree with you 100 percent on that, man. Yeah. And I was, I was so pissed off when they killed off uh, Han Solo. I was so pissed, man. I was too, but I knew like Harrison Ford wanted to die. He wanted to die in Return of the Jedi or Empire. So I was like, okay, I get that. But man, the nail in the coffin for me was Luke Skywalker and, and just the total shit show they did with him. It's like, if you're going to change the character that much, you got to give me something. It's like, I were, we were expecting this huge baby face comeback for Luke Skywalker and it was, oh, I'm going to meditate on this rock. And yeah, I just thought that was so lame. I was like, oh, yeah, and then you yeah. kill him. And you kill him. And you're like, I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, God, <laughs> it was the worst. Oh. Every time I talk about that, I get so <laughs> angry. I literally, I'm literally so- in my chair right now, like gripping my legs out of anger because <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> ah. God, don't get me started. <laughs> so, sounds sounds like you're about to cut a promo on on uh, on the new trilogy. Man. Listen here, you Nimrods, <laughs> trying to explain to me that this new Star Wars trilogy <laughs> is better than the old ones, even the prequels. Let me tell you something: the prequels, at least they had a consistent <laughs> vision. Sure, sure, the special effects don't hold up today. Sure. The acting in front of a green screen was pretty subpar. I'll give you that. But at least we got some of the best memes ever. At least we got Clone Wars. At least we had a relationship between Anakin. And we saw him grow from some snot-nosed kid to the evil being that he became and why. Don't tell me for one second that Rey is better than Luke Skywalker. That wasn't my Luke Skywalker in Last Jedi. That was 
Jake Skywalker. And then they contradict themselves. You're going to drop bombs in space and give us subpar Marvel humor? Don't even come at with that. Don't even come at me that way. Because you want to know why? You know what's going to happen? We can sit here and debate Star Wars all day long. And when I get out of this chair, I'm going to shake your hand. And then I'm going to pull you in and hit you with a short arm clothesline and pick you up and then drop you on your head with a brain buster and then stand up on some jerk's desk and jump off and double stop you and then tell you that you're wrong because this new trilogy, just like you, is garbage. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Hey, you okay? Yeah, you're, 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 hey, you wanted a promo. There, you got your promo. I didn't say that I was what fantastic, your promo was man. That was fantastic. On. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic, man. Thanks, man. Oh man. All right, let's uh, let, let let's 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 jump back into impact. I have uh, another. Uh, um, how do you feel about? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So so um, it, it just that was that was great, man. Uh, how do you feel about Tessa Blanchard as the Impact Wrestling World Champion? I know a lot of people aren't too thrilled about it. Uh, myself, uh, I'm fine with it. I think there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, I just want to know um, what your opinion on her uh, being the Impact World Champion. Has anybody watched Tessa wrestle? You know what I mean? I Tessa know. is I know. amazing. I don't care, woman, man. man, whatever. Tessa can go. She wrestles better than most people, <laughs> man or woman. She cuts a great promo. So her holding the title, that's fine by me. I, I get it. I tr- Trust me, I get it why people don't like it. I, I understand that. And I understand where they're coming from. For me, and my opinion, it doesn't bother me because I think Tessa can back up all of that. So her in the ring, she's amazing. When the story is told right, and I think intergender wrestling works when the story is told right. I totally agree with that. And, um, like, I, I don't want to see her suplex Michael Elgin or powerbomb Michael Elgin. You know what I'm saying? It's just like because he's like yeah. 400 pounds, half of its ego, but whatever. <laughs> Oh, okay. Gotcha, Mike. Okay. Um, he'll agree. Um, but no, I when it's done right, you know, it's it makes sense, just like any story. So, but I understand why people don't like it. I totally get it. It's I'm not saying they're wrong. It just in my opinion, I'm okay with it, and I understand why. I get it. I totally get it. I think Tessa, she, you can't. Like I said, she wrestles better than people, most people, man or woman. That's how good she is. You can't classify the way she wrestles. She's beyond man or woman. She just is a good athlete, period. And so I understand both sides of the story. I'm okay with it. So. No, uh, she's absolutely phenomenal wrestler, uh, absolutely deserving of being the Impact World Champion. I, I have a feeling Michael Elgin is going to be the World Champion after Rebellion tomorrow, uh, but uh, that uh, remains to be seen. I'll, I'll watch it and we'll find out. But uh, very deserving, Tessa Blanchard. Um, I want to tell you of- this. If Michael Elgin, I want the world to be ready. You've already seen him on Twitter. He won't shut up on Twitter. Can you imagine okay. when or if? Michael Elgin gets that belt. I'll have to. I'll have to delete him. I have to mute him. There's no way I could. I could listen to him <laughs> as Impact World Champion run his mouth. It's it's bad enough driving with Michael Elgin. It's bad enough answering my texts from Michael Elgin. It's bad enough looking at his responses to my posts from Michael Elgin. Could you imagine Michael Elgin, the nonstop barrage? <laughs> And he'll he'll agree. He'll agree. He will tell you. He trust me. He'll tell you. He tells you right now. He won't stop if he's you know gets that belt. So <laughs> there you go. I warn you now. If that happens, okay. You ready? <laughs> You're gonna mute him. Okay. Cool. I'm, I'm I, no, I I think I it. think it's gonna happen. I think he's gonna I think he's gonna end up the champion. But like I said, we'll we'll see. Uh, we'll see tomorrow night. Um. I I would like to see him as champion. I'm a, a big Elgin fan, but we'll see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. In all, in uh, all kidding, in all seriousness, Elgin is an absolute phenomenal wrestler, and I think he's one of the best today. He's so smart. The stuff with him and Eddie, just watching those two, you know, backstage, and they're on a different level. They are. They honestly are. Actually, I get two more questions, and then and then we could just wrap this up. Uh, Scott Demore, Don Callis, what are they? What do they like to work for? <sighs> I've known Scott. I knew Scott before Impact, before he got to Impact, got back to Impact, and they're tough, man. I won't lie. They're 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 really tough. They're they're bosses first and foremost, 
And Scott will be the first one to tell you like it is. And uh, Don's the same way. But they'll also tell you, hey, you know, good job, which feels really good coming from your bosses. But they'll bust your balls, man. They, they don't mess around if, you, if you're messing up. Trust me, I've since I kind of know Scott, I knew Scott before, I get it even worse from him. <laughs> There's there's no like, oh, you know him, so he'll take it easy on you. know it's the direct opposite. You, you knew him before Impact, so he's going to be even harder on you. So he's, he's hard on me a lot, but I take everything he says, and, you know, I, I put it into good use, and I, I take his advice, and I take his criticism and his his, uh, his hardships. Don's cool. Uh, I rode with Don one time, and he had some really good things to say about me, so that's a big thing coming from one of your bosses. And, uh, you know, Don's a smart guy. They're both very smart. I'm very happy that they have the reins. And I think when I was there in 2017, it was under different uh, ownership. And it was kind of all over the place. And then when Scott and Don kind of got involved, it's in a much better place. And that's something that bugs the hell out of me, that people don't give impact a chance i get so sick of people trying to treat us like the redheaded stepchild and act like impact doesn't matter we have one of the best rosters and i'm not even saying that because i because i worked like i said when i was here in 2017 the first time i went i was like ah man this isn't that great this is not that good some of the stuff that they're doing it's totally different i've seen people come and go i've seen the morale in the locker room change we have one of the best rosters everyone gets along there for the most part that i know of uh, everyone's cool and then everyone goes out there and works hard and we have fun and it's it's like the product that we're putting out deserves to be on center stage in my opinion but you know people want to hate they're like oh impact stupid impacts that because of past stuff you know what i mean when they had that bad run people still want to associate impact with like the bad run it's a totally totally different roster you know and people need to just that's done that's dead and gone we're a totally yeah. different impact, and we've been busting our ass and putting out great stuff. And it's time that we get credit for it. It, it gets on my nerves that we don't. We should be getting credit for it. So does does it does it get you upset when, um, like say Pro Wrestling Illustrated Online, they don't recognize Impact, um, uh, the Impact World Championship as a legitimate world title? Does that get you upset? Yeah, it does. Because it's been defended over in Japan, it's been defended in Mexico. It's it's so dumb. I, I think that's so petty that they won't they won't do that. And you know, it's weird. Wrestling has really become this elitist, like hipster. It has like this weird. It's not like what it used to be. And people are so like into this into themselves and self absorbed that it's ridiculous. It's like how how dare you, man? We're busting our ass just like anybody else. And we're putting out a really good product, and we have really good uh, talent, you know. And it's like for them not to recognize that, what a joke! That that does it upsets me. It does. Yeah, it upsets me as well because I've been a fan of Impact for for a long, long time. Um, and you guys are just absolutely. I think right now Impact is at its best it's been in, in a very, very long time. And for people to still be um, posting on Facebook or, or Twitter that, oh, you'll be gone in six months, I think that's absolutely bullshit. You guys aren't going anywhere. You're going to be around for a long, long time, man. We're hard to kill for a reason, you know? Yeah. And uh, people absolutely. people just want to be stupid. They jump on that bandwagon. That's the bandwagon they jump on. They probably don't even watch it, and they never even they haven't seen it in oh, yeah. years, and all they want to do is like, oh, well, these people are shitting on it, so let me shit on it. Oh, Impact yeah, stupid. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> That's like you yeah. can't think for yourselves. You're a bunch of sheep. You know, if you actually watch the product Absolutely. with an open mind, you'd be like, man, these guys are killing it. These people are just stupid, man. You know, it's, Absolutely. It, it, there's, there's like that. Uh, it, that does frustrate me. And when the ignorance yeah, no, of some too. people, man, it really bugs me. So, so you guys gonna uh, you and our Rush thing? You guys ever gonna defend that board, the Border City Wrestling Tag Team titles? When you guys, no. I know right now, you know, things are a little tough, but when things get back, you know, Border City Wrestling, there's not too many shows going on up here, even when things were, uh, were at normal, man. I actually like that because when Border City does run, it's an event, you know, and okay. I think it's really cool. And they always draw and the crowd's always hot. 
And uh, I like that. I, I understand it. I totally get it. Yeah, but you know, what? hey, we're the we'll be the longest reigning Border City Tag Team Champions. I'm okay with that. So, <laughs> but I and, I and I and I I'm ready, man. I'm ready to get back to wrestling. And I hope as soon as this is said and done, yeah, Raj and I will be good to go. Great, man. Well, again, I I I think. Um uh, I, I know you guys are you're, you're booked for actually a Glory Pro event, uh, wrestling at the Grandel, uh, June twentieth, twenty twenty. Uh, is that going to happen? You think or it'll get it'll get pushed back? I'm sure. Okay. All right. Well, I'm hopefully sure. you guys will get back soon. But be, yeah, but before we wrap this up, before we wrap this up, is there anything you want to plug? Um, do you have any merchandise you maybe want to sell or, or social media or anything uh, you want to plug? Uh, feel free, man. Well, obviously, you know, you can find me on Twitter. It's at Hakeem Zane. That's H A K I M. Uh, my Instagram is Raju Zane 80. You can look up the Mad Dragon, Hakeem Zane, or Rohit Raju on either YouTube or Facebook, and you'll find me there. I do want to start getting some T-shirts uh, printed out. I had that anime style one. I just have to find someone to do it that can actually do a really good version of it. I had the Wu Tang style Hakeem Zane ones recently. Those sold out, so I hope to get more of those in pretty soon. And um, Really, man, Impact Wrestling every Tuesday on Access TV. I really hope you guys are tuning in. We've been busting our ass to bring a really good product, especially now. So hopefully you guys will tune in. See That way you can see the jaw jacking Tuesday night Impact. And his mother called him Sunday because he shines like one mocha skinned manimal. Ravishing Rohit Raju or handsome Hakeem Zane. Take your pick. Okay, man. That's great, man. Uh, well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, man. Uh, we think we went over a little over an hour, uh, but I had an absolute blast. And um, I would absolutely love to have you back on um, when things Anytime. get back to normal. Anytime, my cool. man. Thank you for having me. Cool, man. Well, this has been uh, Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, I want to thank my guest, uh, Rohit Raju slash Hakeem Zain. Until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.